middle of, a, of an obesity epidemic, aren't we, where we're trying to encourage our children, adults, everyone to take more exercise. Anything that does that is only a good thing, isn't it? Not when it becomes obsessive and it has a negative impact on one's well-being. Um, and also, it can become an addiction, which I think mm. some of these apps can do. And what's worrying is that there's very little research, evidence-based research, to actually back these apps up. One of the tricky things, I think, Sharon, is there are so many, the proliferation of Absolutely. fitness apps and trackers, as we were saying, I think it's, what, £9 billion pounds in the last yeah. three years is extraordinary. And undoubtedly, some of them are better than others. And the concern could be that actually, and we heard from the woman at the end of that piece there, that she felt incredibly stressed when she had forgotten to put in her apps or hadn't mm. achieved the goal that she'd set that day. And that's sort of counterintuitive. That's not what you yeah, want. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the obesity rates have, have tripled since 1975. 58% uh, of, of women, 68% of men are overweight. So it's a huge problem mm. that we are, you know, not really tackling properly. So I think anything that can help us is a tool. Now, there are a few people that are going to get obsessed, but the majority will use it really, really well. And what I think you have to be very careful of is that every single day you don't start marching around your bedroom trying to get your 10,000 steps because actually the 10,000 steps are really neither, neither here nor there. They're not going to burn that many calories because you're not in a fat burning position. That means 220 minus your age, 70%. So your fat burning ratio is much higher than most people think it is. You need to sweat. You in need terms to be of getting your heart rate up, your heart rate needs yes, to be there to burn the calories. So you're just your bed, wearing you really yourself out. Do, just wearing <laughs> the carpet out. Don't mainly, going I spent in a the last six months <laughs> doing 10,000 well, steps Charlotte, Charlotte, how, well, you've, you've, you're living this at the moment because that's your challenge, yeah. isn't it, for you in the new year? Yeah. And how are you finding it? Well, and it was tricky because there were some days where then I was literally doing that. I was running right. up and down the stairs, desperately trying to get up my step count. And I haven't, you know, I've, I've had to kind of make it up at different times. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> yeah. you say you there have been the odd day where I've then thought, right, I'm going to have to do extra tomorrow to make up for it. But there you was do... also the day when you had a manicure and your steps went up. Because <laughs> your hair I was realised. Yeah, yeah. be honest. Yeah. Having a manicure is a great benefit. Well, yeah. but here's the thing. Charlotte is very fit and healthy yeah. anyway. And she leads a very healthy lifestyle and we can see that. And she's doing this as a challenge. Just, and, it's, and it's, you know, she's walking around more, she's trying to get steps. Yeah. Undoubtedly, Sharon's point is still absolutely tangible. There are, it's such a problem here that even doing anything has to be the benefit. Oh, no, no, absolutely. And I, please don't be wrong. I think it's it's wonderful that, that we, we need to in, increase um, active physical activity. Mm. Absolutely. But what's interesting is a lot of research coming out, especially at the University of Staffordshire at the moment, about with uh, Turner and, and Wood, about the fact that um, it, excessively relying on apps mm. can have a really negative impact mm. on one's self-esteem. And also, it... it it's the fact of it, that one needs to have balance there. Mm. And it's, it's using it wisely, that's, that's all. That's the trick with everything, though, isn't it? That is Absolutely. the trick with eating well, that is the trick with everything. And the sort of people that may become addicted, aren't they the sort of people that could become addicted to other things? And isn't this the healthier addiction option? That's a really good point. Um, I think certain individuals have a predisposition, obviously, to uh, whether it's overtraining or mm. they will be addicted. Um, but I, th I think it's using it sensibly, um, understanding what you want the app to, to be for, whether it's, it's to lose weight or to get fit, but, but not so that you're overly reliant and you lose control, because we mm. are being... We are relying so much on technology and we're losing self-control. And that affects self-esteem. Yeah. And, Sharon, that's the thing, is it? There's something about a gadget telling you something that you trust it. It's like whenever I see something in print, I think, oh, that looks official. You know, so maybe you trust it in a way and stop listening to your body and its needs. And it's really important that you just use it as a guide. There's still nothing better than actually going into a gym or going into a pool mm. or going running with a friend, mm. having that interaction with other people as well. So I think it's the balance that you mentioned. It's also so the diversity of things that you do, not just one thing. Mm. You know, it's a do you sensible use middle them? territories. I go through phases, which mm. I bet most of us do. Yeah. You know, you pick them up and then you put them on and you wear them for a little bit, then you forget and, and you get a bit bored, and then you put them down again. So I think it, it's just if I do agree that if you have a kind of obsessive nature, then the chances are you're going to obsess <laughs> about lots of things, and this just mm. might be one of the things that you obsess about. And, uh, we, uh, as, as we touched on when we started, there's an mm. obesity epidemic, not just mm. here in the, in, in the UK, but all mm. over oh. the world at the moment. Yeah. And when we think about and consider how much overeating and unhealthiness costs the NHS a year. Yep. For the amount of people and the amount of cost for the NHS that may be getting obsessed with fitness trackers and may be dealing with a bit of mental anxiety because they're over-reliant, surely the balance is far swung the other way. And actually, if we could get some of the people that are causing, costing the NHS that much money and don't have the motivation to even start, these things well, have that, to be good you've, you've hit the nail on the head, really. It's about motive, understanding your own motivation, mm. understanding what 
you need to use the app for, but also understand what kind of motivation, whether you need self-motivation or you have high self-motivation, um, or indeed whether you have external motivation mm. and you need peer... A lot, a lot of the, the other downside about apps is the peer pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and it... That could be really positive, though. Mm. I'm, I wear one with my boys and my dad's in it as well, yeah. and we're often um, geeing each other up. I've done a few more steps to you today, so the yeah, boys go and play absolutely. football for a little oh, no, bit. No, no, abso so absolutely, but it's when it becomes a guilt... Um, negative impact rather than rather than actually enjoying the exercise. But, think, but exercise. isn't guilt sometimes a little bit good? I mean, mm. you know, no, at the end of the day, if you're not doing the exercise you need to do, then feeling guilty about it is going to hopefully make you get out of it. If you're serious about losing weight, then don't you need to have that little bit of obsession? I was, when I was trying to lose my baby weight, yeah. and I used one of the apps where you put in exactly what you're eating, exactly what exercise you're doing, and I knew if I stuck to that every day, and I did get a bit obsessed by it, then yeah. that was the way to achieve my goal, and I did. And don't you think if people are serious about it, that's what they have to do? No, Absolutely, and I'm all about personal best within my line of my work, but it's about balance and understanding and having the self-awareness to actually dip mm. in and dip out and not so that it controls your life mm. because then it has a negative impact on your mental health well-being. I think it's really important that we take responsibility for ourselves. You know, these sort of things are actually just trying to remind us that we need to stop being quite so lazy. There's more people in the world now overweight than there are underweight, which is a ridiculous wow. statistic. But equally, though, Sharon, I mean, that, that's the other concern that I have, is that you can kind of go, right, I've got my Fitbit on now, come and then get me fit. Yeah, and you can no, look no. Up, right, it doesn't do work. Mm. It does not work. Does like not that. do the so work the, for so you. The, the, you can be over reliant on yeah. the app suddenly mm, to absolutely. make it fit. And the amount of people that I'm sure you meet as well, they're overweight and they want that quick fix because they're looking at people on Instagram. Yeah, and they're looking yeah. on. on... You know, and, and things like yoga is also really good. And an app's not going to tell you how to do that. It's not going to tell you, you know, that, that you've stretched really well today. So there's a mixture of exercises mm. that that's really really important in life to have the balance. Eat well, eat mm. healthy, get some sleep. Have and don't of think that an app will tell you everything you need no, to know to be well. Not. No, absolutely. Yeah. But engage in life as well. You know, don't yeah. just don't just rely totally on the app because otherwise you're you're not actually really getting as much out of the exercise or mm. the activity that you that you'll be able to. I think to. for some people there's an element that it gives you a power to exercise alone as well. And walking mm. into mm. a gym can be very daunting. Intimidating. When you're starting yeah. out, mm. and it gets you going and gets your heart rate going and gets you into the. Well, maybe you can then take yeah. the next step. Would you? I think argue? it's also yeah. really important to understand that doing that 10,000 steps per day is not really going to get you super fit. Because but it it's, it's but just I, isn't, it's not going to get your heart no, rate up high enough. But, but, but Sharon, getting 10,000 steps, is, you're right, isn't going to get you super fit, no, it's but not. it's going to get you up and it's going to get you moving and it's going to get you, you know, make conscious. It's a starting try, point, yeah, to be honest. It's, it's a great starting point, but I think it's very important that people don't realise they just put this on and they do 10,000 steps, and walk that. around their bedroom, and that's it. That yeah. won't do it. It won't work on their core, it won't work on their flexibility, it won't work on their cardiovascular system. So you do have to mix and match. Well, it's yeah. changing your lifestyle as well. Yeah, oh. Yeah, undoubtedly. Uh, we've got to leave oh, it there. So I'll bother downloading it then. No, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's the conclusion <laughs> I've come to after no, 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 that debate. There's so much choice now. Oh, oh, okay. All right. You I can't. have my feet up when I get back home today then. <laughs> <laughs>